Are you recording this? Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So, as most of you know, if you've been watching me for the longest time here, and I, when I say long, it's about two months now. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, yeah, that's a little weird. I stopped my YouTube investment journey in only a couple months ago. But I've been doing investments starting January. Uh, I have this YouTube almost three years, but this YouTube was focused on something else, was not an investment. So once I start talking about investment, um, it just it just literally exploded. It just exploded. The reason why it exploded, because I have a very singular focus. That was, I was all in on Tesla, literally all in on Tesla. When I first started off my portfolio, I have 95% or 95% in Tesla. That is not the case anymore, and I have 4% of common stocks. Now I diversify it because I bought more clips. As you can see, 30% clip, I have 60% yield max. But before that, it was all in on Tesla. Okay, so when I, when I, when I went all in on Tesla, it did a couple of things. Number one, I, I changed the paradigm on how we invest. And for those out there, because for people, when they talk about investment, they talk about, hey, you know, long term, uh, you know, s slow and steady and have diversification, risk and all that stuff, you know, minimize risk, and everything. When you put everything, all your eggs in one basket, yeah, you're going to expose yourself to all those risks. But I knew, I knew back in January that if I go in all Tesla, the couple of questions I've asked, is Tesla going to fail tomorrow? The answer is no. Is Tesla going to fail tomorrow? No, the answer is no, because they just started. They just opened, they just opened their account in November. What ETF failed in three months of, or, you know, within six, you know, six months of their starting? So I was, I was going to take that chance. So based on those two products, and the only way that Tesla fail is Tesla fail. So I was so confident on Tesla uh, that I I was willing to ride the ship, so I went all in on Tesla, and by doing that, yeah, I I literally gain one hundred percent of the income, one hundred percent of the income. So every Tesla money dividends, I have it. I don't. I, it's not split. You know, if you only went fifty percent, guess what? You only get fifty percent. The other fifty percent of your investment is is in something else. But I got literally one percent. So when they pay one dollar, I get one dollar. When they pay forty-four cents, I get forty-four cents. When they pay eighty-three cents, I get eighty-three cents. You know, I got one percent of my total investment. Oh well, ninety-five cents, just you know, to be honest, because the four percent of it go into something else. But so about ninety-five percent of the money, which is pretty close, right? And uh, and so what happened is, it took me it took me almost seven months to get a thousand dollar, but it only took me three months to get the other thousand dollars. Okay, so what changed? What happened? What drastically happened? Well, what happened is the price of Tesla went down to $13 to $12, high $12 and $13. I was able to exploit that gaps. I was not able to do that when it was $18, you know, you know when I was buying $18. As you can see, my cost average is $15.97. Because it was eighteen fifty, but I mean, I bought a lot of thirteen thirteen dollars share to bring it down to two thousand four. Uh, I mean, to bring it down to fifteen ninety seven. So my to my total uh, quantity right now is two thousand four hundred thirty. This is how I able to maximize my entire t Tesla portfolio. So now I got a lot of incomes. Okay, uh, so during that time when I came here, I also I also met. Chris, uh, Chris, going to talk about a little bit here with me. Uh, Chris, what do you think of my my strategy? What would you think it was kind of nuts at the beginning, or you know, what? Uh, no, y your strategy is aligned with mine, actually. Right. So, yeah. I went in with a large size of a Tesla, and um, and now I'm uh, you know DCAing only. If the value drops below my initial investment, so I'm aligned. Yeah. So so uh, so how's it feel now here in October? Even though the dividend is not high, but how's it feel to receive all these income and? Um, I'm still waiting for my income. I'm expecting <laughs> about nine hundred dollars. Yeah. Um, so I'm expecting it has not come in yet. <laughs> 
Um, I, I received a couple hundred um, last month, yeah. um, but I wasn't fully in at that point. Can Can you share us how how do you maximize your Tesla? But I just share you how I maximize my Tesla. How do you maximize your Tesla? Yeah, you kind of explained to me prior to the recording. Uh, I wonder if you could just recap that again. Right. So I put in um, a total of twenty thousand dollars in the Tesla, and um, uh, I'm doing. On, I have it across a few accounts. Um, they're Roth IRA and um, uh, regular IRA, traditional. So I'm not worried about tax implications. Um, so what I'm doing is doing automatic grip on all of them except for one. One of them, which is my bigger size, I'm actually doing a manual drip on it. Um, so I'm looking to get in uh, probably um, with that reinvestment um, when when I receive the dividends, or sometimes I may even do it before I receive the, the, the dividends, if I see a good opportunity, uh, maybe even on next date, go in. Like I could pre-calculate how much I'm going to receive in dividends. So let's say it's like $500. I'll then uh, buy $500 worth of Tesla shares on the X date when it drops by the amount they're announcing as dividend. I'll get in and that's it. I just sit back and, and that's it. So I'm I'm only doing dividend reinvestment back into Tesla. And if the value of my original investment drops below the 20,000, then I would supplement it with, uh, say it drops $1,000 below that, I would supp supplement it with $1,000, I would buy that much worth of Tesla shares. And, 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 and then every month I'll check if that's the case. And if it's not, I don't do any DCA. Yeah, so my DCA method is a little bit different from his. I I continue to buy down as long as the price is lower than my average. And so my average was 1850. So think about it, anything lower, I just keep buying down. So uh, at some point, it's going to get pretty close, you know, uh, get pretty close. So, but because I have so many share, it takes a long time to DCA it. The only way to DCA 2,430 from 1850 down, you gotta spend like thousands of share. Well, essentially you have to double. Uh, if you're gonna bring, like uh, I'll do the math here for you, so this way you can understand. Let me let me open the calculator. All right, so if the price, um, my current price right now is 1597. So 15.97. Chris, can you see the the uh, screen also? Yes, I see the calculator. Yes. All right, and the current price is thirteen sixty eight. So fifteen ninety seven is my my average, my current my DCA average right now, and thirteen dollar and and sixty eight cents is the current price of the stock. So that's twenty nine sixty five. If you add those two together, divide by two, that's fourteen eighty two. So if I buy the current price right now. The best I can do for one share bring down to fourteen eighty two, which is good, but I have two thousand four hundred. You know, I have a lot of share, so that means I, in order to bring the whole things uh, down to fourteen, um, I just forgot the number to bring the fourteen dollars and eighty two cents. I have to spend two thousand four. I have to buy two thousand four hundred thirty share of again. You know, so essentially I have to double that amount just to bring the DCA down. So. So it's going to take a while. It's going to take me a couple of years, essentially, what I'm going to do, because I'm essentially doubling my portfolio. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm only going to buy it at $13. So if if the price is more than $14, I'm going to stop buying it. I'll, I'll spend money on something else. Oh, it's actually not even $14. It's $13.50. So if it's below $13.50, I will buy it. If it's higher than $13.50, I'm just going to stop buying it, uh, pretty much. Uh, so like right now, $13.68, that's, you know, Depending on crane share or some other stuff, I probably buy it because it's still under fourteen. But under fourteen, it's a hard no for me. It's just a hard no. Thirteen fifty, I'm definitely buying. I'm just gonna DCA. That's how I'm gonna bring this thing down. Okay. So if you DCA correctly, let me show you a fund that I DCA correctly, which is OARK. OARK, my current price is thirteen zero five. Thirteen dollars. Thirteen dollars and. And the current price of the OARK is thirteen oh seven. So I'm making two cents. <laughs> I'm making a dollar because I have fifty shares. So every time that OARK drop to drop below thirteen dollar, I'm gonna buy more. I'm just gonna keep buying more, right? 
And that's that's the best way to DCA. When you DCA correctly, and think about OARK is paying 46% yield. 46% yield. N nobody's talking about NAV erosion to me on OARK. You know why? Because I don't have a NAV erosion. I'm, 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 I'm positive. I'm, I have a dollar. If you DCA correctly, you will have a positive return. Now, obviously, I'm going to continue to get positive return because I started correctly. I did not start correctly with Tesla. What happened is I bought a thousand share at 1850. Already, I'm in a negative hole. What I should have done is just DCA way, DCA down with it. So I'll buy 50 share, 50 share, 50 share, whatever. You know, made 20 share, 100 share here, 30 share there. And so it's just throwing a thousand share all at once at that's such a high price. Um, I didn't know how to buy. That was my thing. I, I just want to own Tesla. I did not know how to buy. I didn't know buying on the dip formula. I didn't know all these rules. So that was my my critical uh, critical mistake. But that's okay. I, I, left, I learned from it. Uh, I mean, this is a good mistake to have because I have 2,430 share. I could have get 2,500 share or 2,600 share, but I, I, I just didn't know how to DCA. So that, that was my problem, but now I know how to do it. So I'm not going to worry about it in the future. Uh, so, hey guys, what do you think? Uh, Bird up, you got your mic off. Uh, do you want to say something? I was just coming in to ask about this Tesla payment. I, I still didn't get my dividend from that. I was wondering if you guys knew what happened. Oh, you said I got Oh, no, it's just depending on your brokerage. Oh. I think yeah, TD Ameritrade um, uh, pays it out like around 8 p.m., I think. Yeah, so but definitely TD Ameritrade and Charles Schwab, they're one together now. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. so we're not going to get paid until essentially tomorrow. Um, understood, but, understood. but if you have Fidelity, you got paid Saturday. Just think about it, Saturday. Last, yeah, last I know. Week. One time on TD Ameritrade, I got paid on a Saturday. I think last month I got paid on a Saturday. Yeah. I was, oh, but okay. As long mm -hmm. as I just was worried, I'm not, not worried, but I was just like, what happened? I was, I was planning on buying a little bit today. I yeah. Yeah. Today, so well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of maxed out. So I have, I have negative. Two thousand dollar in margin, so I, I max out my margin. So I'm, once I get paid, my margin is gonna come down. I can buy something else again, and and unfortunately, um, yeah. Are you maxed out your margin? I don't know. I thought. Wait, does Fidelity not do like TD Ameritrade? TD Ameritrade usually they gave me a what is it called? They gave me a hundred percent match on my stock buying power. So I've got about thirty k, and they gave me thirty k of margin. How do you only have? Uh, uh, because are, because are you in a cash account? Are you, are you you're not in like a um, you're not in a uh, IRA, right? Because they won't give you any margin on IRA. No, no, I, mainly I because I only have four percent four percent of my portfolio in common stock. The rest of them, I mean, when majority of my ninety percent of ninety five percent of my portfolio in stocks in stocks that have one percent maintenance. So yield max, mm. clip. That's strange. I guess TD Ameritrade does margin differently because I agree. Uh, well, do you have 95%? Do you have 9% of your portfolio in? I have about, I only have two stocks right now, Tesla and Esval. And I've got 25,000 in Tesla and I've got 12,000 in Esval. Well, yeah. The, the, your they Esval... gave me a 100% match. They gave me about a 100% match for, for uh, what is it called? They gave me a hundred percent match for all my stock, so I have a marginable stocking stock buying power of thirty five thousand six hundred and twenty. Yeah, mainly from your S vault. But that doesn't make any sense. They're not gonna. They're not gonna. They're gonna really give me that much on S vault. Yeah, because Tesla is one percent maintenance. Well, I guess that's for you though. I don't. Really, I don't think that's for me. Well, boss. well, I, I have Charles Schwab. If Charles Schwab using the same rule for TD America. TD Meritrade, they owned it now, so I don't know if the the made, I don't know if they implemented. Well, this that was rule. this my account is well. Okay, you make a good point because my account was made before I my before they merged. So okay. maybe it's just a holdover from their. Yeah, yeah, well, we're getting like transferred over um, in the near future. Why didn't you click yeah. on Tesla and t take a look at their maintenance? Uh, to, 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 let's take if you to if you if if Tesla maintenance is one percent, then then it's you only have two stocks, so that means all of that all of that margin is based on asphalt. No, I can tell. No, well, it's not telling me the maintenance requirement, but what it's telling me is the marginable amount. 
So I have on Tesla and on my position in Tesla, I have a marginable amount of 10,671. And then on my position in, but see, but still that adds up to 23,000 though. It's no, they give you like on, one to four or one to three or whatever. So if you, if you have $10,000, you, you're you going to have $4,000. Make sense? They're not giving you one said, for Well, no, well, that's what I'm trying to tell you. They did give me one for one. They gave me one for one. I can, I could technically today. If yeah, I I'm not disagreeing to. with that. I'm just saying that I, I don't uh -huh. have that because my Tesla is 100% maintenance and my clip is 100% maintenance. What is your, do you know what your daily interest is or your monthly or your yearly APY is for that? Yeah, it's like 11% or something like that. I forgot what the amount is. It's so small, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. I have $53,000 in my account, $53,000. Mm -hmm. And and I'm I'm only able to take like $2,000 you know, a margin, that's it. Because, because majority, not majority, like 95% of my portfolio is in a non- it's in a 100% maintenance account. So that means I'm only using 5% <laughs> of, that, of that entire portfolio, of that 53,000, you know. That's what they use me, to collateral for my, my, my margin. It makes me not want to move over to Charles Schwab because right now, if I was like, you know, one of those crazy people, <laughs> they gave me $100,000 worth of day trading power. So I could day trade with 100K. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Trade. Day trading, yes, I got a lot too. But I don't oh, have okay. that. I, I don't. I don't do day trade, so it doesn't matter. Me neither. Yeah. So. But we're talking about hmm. margin. My margin's only two thousand. Yeah, I don't know. That's interesting. It makes me want. I wanted to move over to. You ever heard of a uh, interactive broker? I like them. They have such low interest. But you need over. You need. I think you need over a hundred k to qualify. They have like strict qualification. I, I don't. I don't have any problem with Charles Schwab. I mean, it, it, they they have every funds that's out there. I, yeah. I never run into an issue that there's, there's, they don't track any fund. Not like Merrill Lynch or some other company. They don't do. They don't even trade tests. They don't even. But trade. eleven percent is a lot. Yeah, they don't right? allow it. Yeah, no. Yeah, it's not allowed in Merrill Lynch. Um, yeah, but it's so small. I like. I, I like. I pay less than less than a dollar. What do you mean? A dollar a day no, or something. Oh, you see, that's why. That's why it's. Uh, that's well. This is what I. I you're not margining your Tesla position. Uh, like again, you're yeah. not taking that other money, that two thousand, and putting on Tesla. Or they're just too small yeah. to make a difference. Yeah, it's it's small amount, which which is okay. I I use my Tesla. I use my margin for a different reason. I use mm. my margin to buy when the price price opportunity drop. Mm. So and then like you put more money into yeah. So when when like when Tesla dropped to twelve dollar, I'm not I'm not going to be able to buy it until I get paid or until my dividend get paid. Makes sense? Yeah. But however, I, that's when I use my margin for. Bam! I just, I just, I just spent two thousand dollars on it, and then I bought it at twelve dollars something. And then when I get my dividends and I get my my monthly contribution, it will just offset that margin and pay it back. That makes sense. That actually is a good idea. I mean, might incorporate that. Uh, okay. I mean, there's there's many ways to skin a cat. You don't have to copy it that way. I mean, but yeah, there's many ways to skin a cat. I. It works for me. Just give me one second. I'll be right back. Yeah. Uh, is anybody else question about uh, Tesla? So because we're 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 just trying to figure out, you know, the money here and. Uh, hey, Bird. Uh, my answer to your question about Tesla dividend. I didn't get it. I'm sorry. What's the question? That's for the bird. Uh, we didn't get the uh, Tesla dividend on TD Ameritrade. Yeah, we, we just had the same conversation with Bird Up only like a minute ago. Um, no, nobody's getting it. Ameritrade and Charles Schwab, you're not going to get it probably until tomorrow. But if you're Fidelity, you get it on Saturday. If you're some other company, you got it today. So it's, it's, it's all depend on your brokerage. It's really, that's, that's, that's the answer. Now, somebody told me, I don't know how true it is, the reason why Charles Schwab is like a 24-hour delay, because there's another company is processing all the paperwork. It's processing it, you know, processing it for Fidelity. Uh, not Fidelity, for Charles Schwab. I don't know. Yeah, that happens. Yep, yep. That's very possible. 
So how much are you going to get, Lion? Lion, how much are you going to get? He's muted. Okay, uh, yeah, I guess so. Um, all right, so let me let me stop the record. Uh, let me stop the recording here. Hey guys, thank you so much. Uh, please subscribe, please comments, and I'll see you next time.